This is Module 1, Lesson 9, I Will Round Numbers to Any Place Value. We are in our third lesson of rounding. I want you to begin by getting the next blank page in your math journal and writing today's date in the right top right hand corner and then Lesson 9, colon rounding. I want you to write 4,333 and the estimating symbol in your math journal. And then I also want you to draw a vertical number line just like um, what we've been using. And I want you to go ahead and label that vertical number line with the two thousands, that 4,333 is in between. And I also want you to label the halfway point between 4,000 and 5,000, just like we've been doing. Okay? When you do that, you should end up with something like this. this. All right, and then I want you to put 4,333. You can see that it is less than halfway. So that means that 4,333 rounds to 4,000. Okay, I want you to try this one, 18,753. We are rounding to the nearest thousand. So I want you to go ahead and draw your vertical number line. And I want you to put how many thousands are in 18? What would be 1,000 more? I also want you to put the halfway point. And then I want you to label 18,753 in your vertical number line. When you're ready to check, I want you to press play, and then I want you to check to see how you did. All right, you can see that 18,753 is more than halfway. So we would say that 18,753 is nearer to or rounds to 19,000. So you've got to put 19,000, don't put that. Put this. Yeah, that looks better. Rounds to 19,000. Okay, all right, try this one. 346,560, and you can see right here we are rounding to the nearest thousand. This can be a little tough sometimes whenever you have hundred thousands and you're rounding to the nearest thousand. Just focus on how many thousands are in this number. Make your vertical number line. Think about how many thousands are in this number, what will be one thousand more, and what will be the midway point. So I want you to pause the video and try to do this by yourself. If you have trouble, just press play, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so there's 346 thousands. One more thousand is 347 thousands. Here's our midway point. And you can see, oh, it's really close to halfway. But because it's greater than halfway, we would say that it, it rounds to 347 thousand. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so I want you to write this in your journal, 65,600. And notice we're rounding to the nearest 10,000. Whenever you're ready, I want you to press play so that you can check your work. Okay, you can see here that there are 60 ten thousands, or six ten thousands, which is 60,000, and 70,000 is, is one more. 65,600 is closer to 70,000, so we would say that 65,600 rounds to 70,000. So back here, I think we have that same number. No, we didn't. Okay. All right. Now, let's try 548,253 rounded to the nearest 10,000. Whenever you're ready, I want you to press play to check your work. All right. So it is between 540,000 and 550,000. Our midway point is 545,000. And you can see that it is closer to 550,000. So 548,253 to the nearest 10,000 is 550,000. Okay, I'm going to skip forward to this one. Okay, now, <clears throat> sometimes when you're rounding a number, and you could, when you have a six-digit number like 147,591, there are many places we could round to. We could round this to the nearest 10. We could round this to the nearest 100. We could round this to the nearest 1,000. We could round this to the nearest 10,000. We could round this all the way to the nearest 100,000. So it always depends on what you're wanting to use your estimate for. Obviously, if you round to the nearest 100,000 like this one, look at all those zeros. That's really going to make adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing 
really simple. If you run to the nearest 10,000, you're going to have less zeros, but you can still pretty well add and subtract 150,000 pretty easily. But what if you wanted to round to the nearest 1,000? The nearest 1,000, it would be 148,000. So notice this is the same number. Round to the nearest 100,000, to the nearest 10,000, and to the nearest 1,000. The less zeros that you have when you estimate, the more accurate your number is. Look at the difference between 100,000 and 148,000. That's a difference of 48,000. And 148,000 is much closer to 147,591. So when you're estimating in the real world, you really kind of have to think about what you're estimating for to decide which place you're going to estimate to. All right, let's go ahead and get out our problem set and let's practice a little bit. So go ahead and put your name on your paper. Notice that we're going to begin by rounding to the nearest thousand. I'd like for you to attempt to do these by yourself, but if you're still having a little bit of trouble and you want to do it with me, feel free to. All right, so to the nearest thousand, and notice this doesn't give you room to put your vertical number line. If you feel like you still would like to use your vertical number line, go ahead and get a piece of scrap paper, and you can put how many thousands are in 5,300, and you can make your vertical number line. I know that 5,300 comes between 5,000 and 6,000, and I know that it's closer to 5,000, so I can pretty well do this without a vertical number line. All right, when I go to B, I know that this comes between 4,000 and 5,000. My midway point is 4,500, and this is past the midway point, so this would round to 5,000. So, two times in a row. All right, so this would come between 42,000 and 43,000, and it's closer to 42,000. So to the nearest thousand, it'd be 42,000. And these are zeros, and they look like sixes. All right, then the more digits, the more difficult this can sometimes become. All right, so this is going to be between 801,000 and 802,000. The midway point would be 801,500. Ooh, it's just barely over. So this would actually round to 802,000. And it says explain how you found your answer for part D. I kind of did explain it to you when I was doing it. But if I were going to do this as a student, um, you could either use words and say exactly what I just said. Uh, I knew that it was between 801,000 and 802,000, with 801,500 being the midway point. Or you could even draw a vertical number line. Since this doesn't give me a lot of room for a vertical number line, I'm actually going to be a little bit sneaky and use a horizontal number line. All right, so I've got 801,000. And then down here I have 802,000. And then I could put it right here in the middle, 101,500. And then I would just go right through here and I would go ahead and plot 801,000. All right, so part two is exactly like part one, except notice it says round to the nearest 10,000. So again, I want you to try to do these on your own. So I want you to pause and try to do it on your own. And whenever you want to stop to check, you can press play and listen to the explanation. If you don't need the explanation, you can kind of fast forward through it. All right, so to the nearest 10,000, this is going to be between 20,000 and 30,000, with the halfway point being 25,000. Since this is more than 25,000, this would round to 30,000. And this is going to be between 30,000 and 40,000 with 35,000 being the midway point, less than 35,000, so it rounds to 30,000. This would be between 780,000 and 790,000. It's already pretty close to 790,000, so I know it's going to round to 790,000. All right, so this would be between 700,000, because there's a zero in the tens place, and 710,000. 705,000 would be the midway point, so 710,000 would be um, what this would round to. So explain why two problems have the same answer. Write a number, another number that has the same answer when rounded to the nearest 10,000. So if you'll notice that in, in number two, that A and B have the exact same answer. So I want you to stop for a minute and try to answer this, but if you get stuck, you can ask a friend that's working on the same lesson, or you can you can listen to my explanation. All right. <clears throat> so.
So when I'm looking at A and B, they have the same answer because even though they're not the same numbers, if I drew a number line like this, And I was to put 20,000 here, and I was to put 30,000 here, there's 10,000, and I would have 25,000 in the middle. The reason why these two numbers have the same answer is because 26,000 is past the midway point, and so is what is it? And okay. so go down here and put my thirty thousand back. Okay. And here is thirty five thousand, which is the midway point between thirty thousand and 40,000. So 34,920 is closer to 30,000 because it's not past the midway point. And 26,000 is closer to 30,000 because it is past the midway point. So I have to write another number that has the same answer and round it to the nearest thousand, 10,000. So basically I just have to pick a number that's between 26,000 and 34,000. So I'm thinking, hmm, I think I'm going to choose, how about 28,000, 28,967, that would round to 30,000 also, okay, on to the back, again, I hope that you're moving well, moving along, well, if you're needing to, if I'm going too fast for you, you can always stop and listen to the explanations. If I'm going too slow, you can always go a little bit faster. Okay, round to the nearest 100,000. All right, so actually this is not the back of your page, even though it looks like it is on mine. It's not, it's just the bottom of your page. Okay, so to the nearest 100,000, this is between 800,000 and 900,000. It's closer to 800,000. This is between 800,000 and 900,000, but because it's slightly over 850,000, this is going to round to 900,000. This is between 700,000 and 800,000. It's closer to 800,000. This is between 900,000 and a million, and it's closer to a million. All these zeros make it a little bit easier. All right, so again, I've got two problems that have the same answer. And the, and the reason is exactly the same. Well, different numbers, I guess you could say. So if I had 800,000 here, and I had 900,000 here, since I'm rounding to the 100,000, I'm using all 100,000, and I have a million here. And these are my halfway points. This is 950,000, this is 850,000. So here I have, 840,000 would be here. Done it again. You know, I did this time, I went too far that way instead of going backwards. Oh. I don't make those sort of mistakes. Okay. So, I'm going to try this again, but not with that fat pen. All right. And 800,000 and 900,000. Okay, so my midway points 850,000, 750,000. Okay, so here's 840,000. It's less than 850,000. So this is 800,000. 761,000 is going to be right here. So another number that would round to the same number, mm, how about 799,999? That's a fun one. Okay, now on to the back. 
Okay, so the Super Bowl has an attendance of 68,658 people. If the headline in the newspaper read about 70,000 people, how did the newspaper round to estimate the total number of people in attendance? Well, I'm looking at 68,000. And if they rounded to 70,000, they had to round to the nearest 10,000. If they ran it to the nearest thousand, then it would have been sixty-nine thousand because then it was between sixty-eight thousand and sixty-nine thousand. All right, let's scroll down a little bit here. All right, the 2011 Super Bowl had attendance of 103,219 people. If the next day it said about 200,000 people attend this, the Super Bowl, is a newspaper's estimate reasonable? I want you to stop and think about that for a minute. Do you think it's reasonable? Could you estimate 103,219? So here's 200,000. Here is the thousand. The midway point is one hundred fifty thousand. And one hundred three thousand is way back here. The newspaper said that it's about. I think that that is a reasonable. I do not think it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable because it's an inaccurate estimate. It's actually closer to 100,000. And that's what you could write. You would say um, the newspapers Try this one on your own, um, the last one here. And if you need my help, tune back in and I'll be glad to help you. According to the problems above, about how many more people attended the Super Bowl in 2011 than in 2012? Round each number to the largest place value before giving the estimated answer. It's really important that you always round before you do your addition and subtraction. If not, you are defeating the purpose. Okay. So it says round to the greatest place possible. So, so let's bring here and I can see both numbers. All right, so I've got 68,658 people in 2012. Then I have 103,219. So the greatest place possible in this number would be to the 10,000th place. So this is between 60,000 and 70,000, but it's closer to 70,000. And then 100,000, three, 219, the greatest place possible is the 100,000th place. And we already know that it rounds to 100,000. So when I go back up here and I look and it says um, about how many more people. So that tells me I'm gonna subtract. So if I took 100 and I subtracted, 100,000, 70,000, that would give me 30,000. So I would say about 30,000. Your exit slip. 